Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley Claiborne, and I am here to talk to you today about grassroots placemaking, fostering social capital, and a sense of place in Arkansas. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. But before we get started, I think I need to give a few more details about myself. You should know that the best compliment anyone has ever given me was, wow, you sure have a strong sense of place. I'm not even kidding, I married the guy. The truth is, more than a than place, I love the stories that make up the place. And I love learning about what it means to be of a place. I myself am a proud Arkansan, originally from the backwoods of Southwest Arkansas, but I've lived in just about every type of community Arkansas has to offer, whether that be rural, urban, suburban, or literal middle of nowhere. Currently, I live in Little Rock, so I guess metropolitan. Over a decade ago, I was fortunate enough to earn a spot at the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts. And in 2012, I took a formative class with James Katowicz on Southern literature. Uh, during that class, he tasked us with visiting the Garland County Historical Society and choosing an archival re research project that connected with the themes that we were exploring in the literature. Uh, me being the mildly ostentatious gal that I am, picked bootlegging during Prohibition and the connection to the themes of perseverance, inner demons, and economic hardship. During this course, I fell in love with the idea of contemporary experiences and stories connecting with the history, people, and events of the past that are deeply unique to a place in, and ingrained in that community. Since then, I've gone on to study psychology and communication, but I was always wondering back to the idea of what or maybe even how does it mean to be Arkansan. At the University of Arkansas, I met my mentor and friend, Dr. Ryan Neville Shepard, who introduced me to the field of communication and rhetorical studies and supported my unyielding adoration for my home state. With his guidance, I went on to write a master's thesis about place and identity in Arkansas. And that actually won two awards from the National Communication Association. And I have fully developed a passion for history, culture, identity, and how all three shape our communities and our sense of self. More recently, literally last week, I started as the new outreach coordinator for the Oxford American Magazine, a Southern literary magazine that's been around since 1992, writing for and about the American South. In this new position, I will do social media strategy and outreach to previously underrepresented groups in the audience of the Oxford American. This new position is a large after effect of my fostering a fairly significant following on social media, uh, on TikTok, making content about history, culture, politics, and identity in Arkansas and the American South. Uh, on my platform, at Feral Academic, I have made a vast array of videos ranging from the history of the Little Rock Nine to the very o brief overview of the election history of the United States. I love using my skills and expertise to synthesize complex information into engaging and accessible content that is more digestible for a wider audience. In some ways, this is just an extension of my previous research studying space and place and how it can influence individual and community identity. This is also an application of my current research on social capital or the networks of relationships that exist within a community and facilitate uh, the economic and frankly just daily operations of that community. My theory is that the more people know about a place and the stories that it holds, the more they care and the more opportunities they may find to become invested and engaged as a community member. Which brings us to today's presentation. Today, I want to explore the idea of grassroots placemaking, how it is currently being used in Arkansas and the American South, and what an investment in such a process could mean for a community. So what is placemaking? For our purposes, we're gonna understand it as the 
participatory process for managing public space and place within a community to harness the ideas and assets, stories, of people who use it. It's about making our communities feel more like home, places where we're proud to live, work, and play. It's a powerful tool to foster social, political, and economic engagement. I use the specific descriptor of grassroots because I'm referring to activities or programs that begin and operate at the local level or from the bottom up, uh, rather than being dictated from some higher authority or top-down structure. So much of what can be done to inspire a sense of place and improve the quality of life in a community can be done by anyone. You don't need to wait for the big universities or state government to plan a multi-million dollar program. In fact, starting from the bottom up means that you might uncover stories and perspectives that are often overlooked in the grand scheme of things. It is important to note here that I am not advocating for every community to pick a singular uh, homogenous story and uh, require that everyone invest in that, but rather that to fully engage with grassroots placemaking, you see all the stories within the community as an asset. So this whole idea of grassroots placemaking is based on three main premises. First, every story is worth telling. This premise underscores the importance of local narratives and history and shaping community identity. I believe that every individual, every neighborhood, every community has a story that contributes to the overall distinctiveness. And these stories hold the key to understanding the unique values and shared experiences that bind these people together. Two, people know what they need. This is a really complicated way to say I don't advocate for gentrification. Uh, this premise is grounded in the belief that people who live in a place are those best positioned to understand its strengths, needs, and potential. They are more intimately familiar with the culture, traditions, issues, and opportunities of their locality. Let the people tell their own story. And then three small actions lead to big change. This premise recognizes that change often starts at the grassroots level with small incremental actions. Even seemingly minor interventions can have a significant impact over time, leading to transformative change within a community. This is especially relevant in placemaking where small scale projects like community gardens or local festivals or a mural downtown can spark larger, larger community development efforts, inspire civic pride, and strengthen social cohesion. Furthermore, the development of social capital is a crucial component and outcome of placemaking programs. Social capital, again, refers to those networks uh, between individuals within a community that foster the economic and day-to-day uh, -day operations of that community. It is often seen as a largely intangible asset, uh, but it is essential, I think, for a community to really thrive. It fosters a sense of belonging and sense of purpose so that you are personally invested within your community. By investing in these placemaking programs that encourage social interaction and community engagement, Arkansas and the American South can cultivate a strong sense of social capital that will contribute to the overall well-being and success of our communities. The act of investing in social capital can yield a multitude of benefits for, for the community as a whole. Uh, by promoting growth and development of communities, this type of investment stimulates economic prosperity and encourages greater involvement in civic affairs. Additionally, it can lead to improved workforce recruitment and retention by fostering a shared sense of purpose and commitment to common goals. First up, placemaking and investment in social capital strengthens our communities. This is pretty straightforward, but if you are investing in curating spaces and places and dynamics that foster a sense of relationality and uh, inclusivity within your community and invite other people to join you in that space, that community will be stronger. Um, I think in the digital world, we are often so incredibly isolated in our little online bubbles that we're less inclined to have these interpersonal dynamics or at the very least dynamic relationships at that local level. But when you know your neighbor or you know the cashier at the grocery store, you feel more of a sense of belonging and you are suddenly 
increasingly more invested in their well-being as they are in yours. Another benefit of investing in social capital through grassroots placemaking efforts is increased civic engagement. So civic engagement refers to the degree to which the average individual within a community is participating and involved and feels the sense of ownership or agency for their community. They know that their voice matters and it's going to be heard and they can implement change to create more safe and inclusive environments. And this happens whenever the pathway to communicating your needs and desires and dreams are inclusive, accessible, and effective. So the sense of trust and reciprocity within a community is only strengthened whenever there are specific places and stories with which all individuals feel they can take part in. And then finally, my dissertation topic, uh, investment in social capital and placemaking can be increasingly beneficial for workforce recruitment and retention. According to the Pew Research Center, in 2018, millennials, myself included, that is workers uh, born between 1981 and 1996, made up about 35% of the U.S. labor force, but by 2025, they are expected to form 75% of the global workforce. Research suggests that this younger generation more highly values work-life balance and quality of life when making career decisions as compared to previous generations. Uh, the research shows that factors such as collective efficacy and civic participation, which we just talked about, are critical in retaining these specific workers. When studying the residential choices of workers in growing fields, uh, contemporary growing fields, Frankel and colleagues in 2013 found that aspects such as population density, cultural and educational land use, and social infrastructure significantly influenced the decision-making process. Moreover, in 2021, Kaplan and Fisher found that these same workers often cited that collective effic efficacy as critical for their staying intentions. So that means that the degree to which they felt they could have an impact in that community decided was a deciding factor on whether or not they stayed or continued to reside in that community. You might be thinking, wow, Ashley, all of this is so great in theory, but how on earth do we even get started? Well, conveniently enough, uh, the space that I originally gave this talk in at UA Little Rock downtown can exemplify all of these processes. First, the most crucial aspect of grassroots placemaking is empowering local voices. It's essential to recognize that local residents have the deepest understanding of their own communities and their insights are invaluable in the placemaking process. This empowerment can take many forms, such as public meetings and forums to gather input or commu on community issues and come up with potential solutions. Uh, digital platforms, such as TikTok, can be used to uh, access broader community input. Moreover, community members should be included in decision-making processes. This can mean voting on public projects, participating in planning committees, and involving uh, local community leaders in key roles within the project. Grassroots placemaking requires investment in local entrepreneurship and local history and culture. I ardently believe that every place has a unique story to tell and a unique talent pool to draw from, if only there are equitable and accessible ways to get involved. A wonderful example of this investment in local talent and entrepreneurship is the City of Little Rock's Build Academy, which actually held their first cohort for their 12-week program uh, at the UA Little Rock downtown space back in the fall of 2021. So this program provides individuals in our community, often from underserved areas of our community, with the requisite resources and knowledge to kick off their entrepreneurial programs and businesses. This investment in the unique talent of local residents incentivizes further community buy-in and engagement. Additionally, to effectively engage in grassroots placemaking, one has to value the local history and culture of the space, both contemporarily and historically. This can mean preserving and revitalizing historical buildings, uh, providing land acknowledgement statements and preservation efforts, creating public art that represents the contemporary cultures and people who reside within a space, hosting events that celebrate local traditions and histories, 
It's about acknowledging the past and using it as a foundation to build a more vibrant and resilient future. Furthermore, valuing history and culture also promotes diversity inclusive and inclusivity if it ensures that all cultural groups within a community are represented and celebrated within public spaces. At the UA Little Rock Downtown Space, you can find a representation of one of my favorite uh, Arkansas stories, uh, the 1935 Struggle in the South mural by Joe Jones, which was once located on the dining hall commons of the Labor College in Mena, Arkansas, the Commonwealth College. This, the restoration of this artifact and the ongoing programming about and for the story that it tells is a key investment in local history and it promotes a more diverse perspective of Arkansas by engaging in very difficult conversations of labor, race, and social organizing. Lastly, successful placemaking requires long-term investment. Placemaking is not a quick fix but an ongoing process that evolves over time and is ideally passed on from generation to generation. Long-term investment can mean consistent financial support for public projects, but it also involves investing time and effort into fostering relationships and building community engagement. It might involve creating bodies or groups dedicated to maintaining and improving the public spaces or putting policies in place that ensure future development uh, aligns with the original community's vision. An exemplar of this type of long-term planning is the uh, Arkansas Civil Rights Heritage Trail, part of which can be found right downtown on the north sidewalk of President Clinton Avenue between Cumberland Street and Rock Street. In November 2019, the community of Little Rock gathered at UA Little Rock downtown to induct the now deceased members of the Elaine 12, um, the victims of the Elaine Race Massacre of 1919. Their uh, plaque and name were commemorated and celebrated along this civil rights trail. The trail is part of a larger regional placemaking effort to tell the story of civil rights in the American South. This U.S. Civil Rights Trail is a collection of churches, memorials, courthouses, schools, and other landmarks in the southern United States and beyond that played a pivotal role in advancing social justice in the 1950s and 60s. There are long-term plans for further expansion of this trail in Little Rock and beyond through community-led organizing and programming. Now, to be clear, the idea of grassroots placemaking is not new. It is not my idea. I am just suggesting that we have a little fanfare for the whole ordeal. So, for example, an exemplar of what I am talking about is the People's Library in Fox, Arkansas, a small town with a population of 273. This project is the work of Meadow Creek Incorporated, a not-for-profit organization situated in one of the largest privately owned and protected tracts of forest and farmland within the Ozark region. The organization is managed by residents and volunteers with a guidance from a board of directors who themselves are all Arkansas-based and several live within the community. In 2019, Meadow Creek leaders wanted to create a community hub of sorts where people could come together and share and gain resources. And so the People's Library Project was born. This is a community-based library that operates much like a public library with the addition of pay-what-you-can services and activities. The project made use of an existing historical structure located across from the Fox Community Store and Post Office that was restored entirely by residents and volunteers using donated paint, services, tools, and labor. They have since established the Rural Creative Placekeeping Project with Olivia Trimble, a well-known Arkansas muralist. Recently, they invited local, story, local students from the Rural Special School to develop a community message mural. The message they chose was, quote, acceptance is expected here, kindness is required, and they came together to help create the final product this past March. Another great example of what I'm talking about when I say community placemaking and grassroots placemaking is the Mississippi Center for Cultural Production, also known as CIF Culture. It is a community-driven organization that takes pride in preserving Utica, Mississippi's rich history and tradition through various initiatives. The effort is less about curating a specific place, but more in investing in the stories and histories of that place.
One of their most noteworthy programs is the DigiCulture Lab, which is a summer program intended for middle school students in the community. It combines media and agricultural production and aims to introduce rural teenagers to the art of narrative-based storytelling. The students learn how to operate audiovisual equipment and editing software, and then they are asked to reflect on and document their personal histories and family histories within the community. This immersive program is a great opportunity for young individuals to explore the intersection between storytelling and agriculture, which is a field that most of them are coming from, while gain gaining a deeper appreciation for their local community and history. In conclusion, grassroots placemaking is a powerful tool that can help foster social capital and a unique sense of place in Arkansas. By empowering local voices, valuing our history and culture, and committing to long-term investment, we can create communities that are not only great places to live, but also attract and retain talented individuals. The premise always brings me back to the quintessential query posed by Faulkner and Absalom Absalom. Tell about the South. What's it like there? What do they do there? Why do they live there? Why do they live at all? Well, I'll tell you for the love of the people, for the stories they hold, and for the sake of it all. That is what I'm doing on social media. That is what the Oxford American does in its publications. That is what Cal supports in its public programming. And that is what you can do for your community. You see, I love my home, in spite of its challenges, because of the richness it offers, a paradox of complexities that ignites the fires in our heart and has done so for generations past, and I hope for generations to come. I invite you with open arms to see beyond the surface to explore the hidden beauty, the unspoken stories, and the indomitable spirit that lies within. Thank you.